When you haven't won a Stanley Cup for 40 years, I don't care how much talent you may or may not have, you're an underdog. The team I took over in 1982 was in the Detroit River, quite frankly. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but you don't have any kind of a hockey club. I knew that there were good players in Russia. The problem was there was an iron curtain. There's no book, you know, you couldn't go anywhere and say, okay, how do you get a guy to defect? I knew one guy that spoke Russian. I get to Helsinki, they notice a guy, I'm convinced he was their KGB guy. Literally, we're making it up as we went along. I said, Sergey, this money's yours if you leave now. It was interesting for me, it was like a little bit exciting. My home phone rings, and it's some guy from the State Department. Do you know the whereabouts of Sergey Fedorov? To which I basically said, yes. Very quickly, you're like, hey, this guy's pretty good, <laughs> you know? One of the most talented players I ever saw in my life. Scotty Bowman knew one thing, that the Russian game is played in five-man units. First time in NHL history, five Russian guys playing in the same unit. I said, let's go. They played a different style. It was keep away. I mean, literally, they would play keep away. No way! What is this, hockey night in Canada or hockey night in Russia? Hasta la vista, baby. People questioned Scotty Bowman. They questioned if we could get it done. They're coming over. They're going to have to play the Canadian way. They're going to have to toughen up. <laughs> it's way beyond hockey. American, Canadian, Swedish, Russian, they're all Red Wings! None of this matters unless we win.